hi guys welcome back to mama estoj vlog how are you guys doing if you are new here you are welcome and if you are returning subscriber god bless you as you always come back to watch my video my people know be smart you know one dash shall never end my people on a note in a different this now they land for my table and as they land for my table now so the career i'm going to come share out with you all right my people for today video i'm going to wash out together with you all right my people we'll go watch the video to see what really the apple for inside the video my Elections are always moments of intense emotions in the history of this country. And it takes days for people to look back and have a more balanced view on the elections. And the balanced view will show there are positives and there are negatives of the last election and that at this point the way forward is to look on the positives understand the negatives and embark on advocacy to ensure those negatives do not replicate themselves think a moment about 2007 which was the worst election in the fourth republic where the chair of the electoral commission of the time would simply sit in his office, write results, and announce them. At the end of that election, Nigerians were dumbfounded, they were stunned, and they felt completely dejected. What did they do? They decided to reflect, how do we make sure we don't have elections as bad as the 2007 elections occurring in this country again. Since then, we've never had an election as bad as the 2007 elections. So my spirit today says, look at the positives, look at lessons learned, and map a better and greater future where Nigerians would be very happy mm -hmm. at the end of every election. Well, that's a positive uh, spin to it, but mm -hmm. Looking at it from the point of view of a young person who's just reached the age, the voting age, and never, I mean, was virtually in diapers in 2007, um, and this is, has been their first experience of Nigerian elections, full of promise, full of hope, and then crushing disappointment. From that point of view, has Nigeria pretty much hit the buffers when it comes to conducting free, fair, and credible election? Because it tried the manual system, it didn't work, and it tried the digital system, and that hasn't worked either. Well, I think the positives for young Nigerians is that it took a very long time for them to see the benefits of engaging in the electoral process itself. And that happened for the first time with this election. A lot of young people got highly mobilized, engaged the electoral process, campaigned, and had a lot of hope that this is the election that will fix all of Nigeria's problems. For many of these young people, they would be in shock and deep disappointment. There is a risk that their attitude might be to give up on Nigerian elections. I think that will be a wrong approach. I think that will be negative and that wouldn't serve their purpose because this country is what they have the time to live in and those of us at the edge will be sliding to the next world uh, very soon. The point for them really is to say that look at these elections. It re-established re certain fundamentals about Nigerian uh, elections. The most important one of which is that just because you have power doesn't mean you can swing elections to your benefit. Many extremely powerful people and parties found themselves in a situation where the powers of incumbency could not guarantee their political future. This is a huge gain 
for young Nigerians in particular, who for a long time had had the attitude that these incumbents would always abuse their powers of incumbency to make things impossible for new forces to emerge. And what we saw in these elections, we've never had an election in the history of this country where so many incumbents couldn't deliver on their electoral wishes. That's a huge positive. Mm. And I think I'll call on these young people to look at that positive. So in a sense, things are inching forward. Um, mm. You talked about the disaster of the 2007 elections uh, as the legal challenge progresses through the court system towards the first hearing does your conviction grow or lessen that the whole election was one big political stitch up i mean the presidential election as you assess the various sides to it well you know uh, i was uh, watching a clip by olisa Agbako by the other day where he was expressing his views about the involvement of the judiciary. Mm. And he made the important point that he's extremely worried that it will used to be possible to predict where the judiciary is going because once you know the facts, you can tell the direction they are going. What he says is afraid he no longer has that confidence that you can predict where the judiciary is going and that therefore something very funny is happening with the judiciary. I also watched, I think it was on your program yesterday, Femi Falana, mm. uh, another legal luminary, making the case that one of the specificities of this country is that we have more cases around elections that go to court than any other country in the world. What all this tells us is that one of the worrying realities of our contemporary Nigeria is that the judiciary has become an active player in deciding electoral outcomes, and they are not always doing it for the good reason. This should disturb us, and this should lead us to a situation where elections should be decided at the polling booth where people express their votes and those votes are counted and the clear results are announced and that's the end of the story. That's where we want to be at. And therefore, I'm worried about the role of the judiciary. Uh, I'm particularly worried about certain gains we've made in law such as the fact that you can't say you are the candidate for an election if you didn't contest in the primaries. We had a Senate president, we have a Senate president who we all saw did not participate in an election, and the judiciary declares him as the candidate for that primary elections. That disturbs me, that worries me, and I look at foreboding at some of the shocks that may emerge from the judiciary as we move forward. Mm. And um, in the context of what you just said, um, because, I mean, unfortunately, um, the, the whole elections moved to the judiciary. So yeah. there's nothing we can do. We can't extricate them mm. from the process. We have to depend on them to help us get through the process. Are you consoled by the fact that the wheel of justice may be turning slowly, but at least they are in motion by way of the courts? Well, I think it's important that contentious electoral issues end up in court. But I think it's also important that we begin to express clearly and loudly our understanding of what the courts are doing sometimes. And when they go out of what we consider to be the realms of the reasonable or the realms of justice, we should proclaim it high and loud. I think in this country we are too respectful of the judiciary and maybe we have to start talking to them the way we talk to ourselves. And then they may begin to understand that they are not our overlords 
who can disregard the law as ordinary people understand it and impose judgments that are blatantly irrational, wrong, and against the interest of justice. That's a very good point that you make. And again, in that regard, how do you assess the grounds? Um, I mean, I know you're not, you're not a lawyer, but you're, you're one of the most, I mean, astute generalists that I know who keeps a very close eye on things. How do you assess the grounds on which the two parties, the PDP and Labour, and their presidential candidates have filed their legal challenges at the election tribunal? I think uh, their grounds, to me, make a lot of sense. They are raising lots of questions of law, and I think the resolution of those questions of law could lead to interesting results. The fact of the matter is that given the nature of our judicial system, it's extremely difficult to show that a party that has been declared winner actually did not win. Because the onus of proof is on the petitioner to show that every vote assigned to the winner is in fact falsely assigned. And when you are talking of 8 million votes, showing that a significant percentage of those 8 million votes were wrongly assigned or allocated becomes an extremely difficult thing. Or well, at least the difference between the, the other the, candidates. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah because and we are still million. talking of millions yeah. uh, between them. Mm. So I think it's, in the best of situations, extremely difficult to do. And that therefore the advantage, as it were, uh, is always with the person that has been. My people, na the video na on a new watch when you On a switch up for inside the video. All of my people are going to like to end the video for you. And if you never subscribe, you can subscribe. So that I don't go miss any latest history I upload. On a babachi, like come on a way next time. Bye guys, catch my next video. Bye guys.